this lesson, we are going to introduce law of cosines. Um, and law of cosines is basically um, when you can't use law of sines, we're going to use law of cosines. So here's what the formula looks like. There's three versions, three iterations of this. Um, but basically, it is a squared is going to equal b squared plus c squared minus 2bc, those same two things, times cosine of the angle um, that you kind of started with, so the angle across from the side. So you'll notice that if this is a b squared, that's a cosine of b. If that's a c squared, it's a cosine of c. Um, but this is your formula, so you're going to use one of these in order to use law of cosines. And um, just a real quick, if you want to use law of sines, the only way you can use it is if you have an angle and a side across from it. If you have that situation, you're definitely going to be able to use law of sines and not law of cosines. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to do one example on this. Um, so I just drew a picture. I didn't try to draw it to scale or anything. I just drew a picture, threw in my values, um, and so we have a side, side, and an angle in between. And no way can we create this angle and side um, so in law of sines, kind of one full ratio. So we don't have an angle to go with that side, we don't have an angle to go with that side, and we don't have a side to go with that angle. So it's gotta be law of cosines. So um, if this is the angle that we have, that's gonna be our last piece. So that's like cosine of A. So we're looking at this exact situation. So that means that we're gonna be able to find this piece. So we'll set up our formula as A squared is gonna equal the other two sides. 15.4 squared plus 12.9 squared, and then minus two times those exact same two numbers, 15.4 times 12.9, and then times cosine of the angle in between those two, which is the angle across from, so it's A and then cosine of A, so 42.3 degrees. All right, so <clears throat> good news, this is actually your best situation, whether you're using law of sines, law of cosines, or anything. If you have this, you're just going to plug all this into the calculator and then square root it. So if we put all this into the calculator, this is going to be a squared. It's going to equal um, roughly 109.7 with a whole bunch of stuff after that. And then I'm going to square root the whole bunch of stuff after that as well. So I'll let my calculator store all that information and square root it. And so then that gets us about 10.5. All right, so that gets us A. A is 10.5. Okay, so now once I have this, I actually have a law of sine situation. Um, so I can jump right into it because I now have an angle and a side across from each other. So I can do law of sines, so I can do sine of 42.3 over 10.5, and then I can set it equal to a different one. So let's say we do sine of C over 15.4, and then we can cross multiply to solve this. So eventually we're going to do inverse sine, um, eventually, but we'll cross multiply and we have 10.5 times sine of C equals this cross product of 15.4 sine of 42.3. We're going to divide by 10.5 and we're going to do um, the inverse sine at the same time. So it's C is going to be the inverse sine of whatever this fraction gets me. So sine of 42.3 divided by 10.5. So angle C is roughly 81.7 degrees. All right, so this is 81.7 degrees. And then to figure this thing out, we're just going to take 180 minus these two. So that means angle B it's going to be about uh, 56 degrees. So then just a real quick spot check to make sure things feel okay. Uh, biggest angle should be across from the biggest side. Um, smallest angle should be across from the smallest side. And since those things line up, there's a good chance that we did this right. So that was one problem of law of signs, and we'll do one more and then a word problem.